order. Pray, give us order. This meeting will now come to order. Please welcome your classmates, Gabriella Jolie Gamez, William Avery Kingham, and Peter Giles Duke, who will lead America the Beautiful. Please remain standing through their performance and the invocation. We respectfully acknowledge that Williams College stands on the ancestral homelands of the Stockbridge Muncie Mohicans, who are the indigenous peoples of the region now called Williamstown. Following tremendous hardship after being forced from their valued homelands, they continued as a sovereign tribal nation in Wisconsin, which is where they reside today. We pay honor and respect to their ancestors past and present as we commit to building a more inclusive and equitable space for all. How do we respond when we realize that we stand upon sacred land? We may pause, we may reflect, we may acknowledge. In the Hebrew Bible, Moses notices a burning bush atop a mountain, yet the bush is not consumed. He turns aside to behold this great wonder to figure out why it does not burn. 
And at that moment, the divine calls to him from the bush, and it says, do not come any closer, remove your sandals from your feet, for the place upon which you stand is sacred land. When he realizes that he is on sacred ground, Moses shows respect by removing the one thing that creates distance between himself and the land. He removes his sandals so that his feet are planted firmly in place as he prepares to experience the awesomeness of the moment. Today, in addition to Williams College commencement, is the Jewish holiday of Shavuot. It is the holiday in which the Jewish community celebrates the giving of the Torah at Mount Sinai so many generations ago. In that ancient time, the Israelite people gathered at a mountain, the same mountain where Moses encountered a burning bush and divine voice. The Israelites also stood on sacred land. They had a communal experience of ecstatic revelation, much like we're having here today. And they received an influx of wisdom that changed their lives forever and resonated through the ages. Williamstown may not be Mount Sinai, but this too is sacred land. It is sacred to the Stockbridge Muncie Mohicans, and in a different way, it is sacred to us here. This land is sacred because it is inherently holy, but also because of what you all, what we all, have created here during our time learning, researching, playing, practicing, performing, sharing, living our lives together. As we stand here, all of us together, graduates and family, professors and staff, community members, in awe and in humility of what this moment means, we pray that this moment and this time in your life remains with you and resonate in their own way as your time here unfolds within your heart and in your mind, its challenges and its gifts unfurling and guiding you as you continue your life's journey beyond this place. May the sacredness of this place, this valley, these mountains, and the people and experiences they have held remain ever with you, and may you bring blessing to a world that so desperately needs it. Please be seated. Sheriff Bowler, thank you for your special kickoff to the ceremony. On behalf of the college, I'd like to open these ceremonies by extending a warm, warm welcome to all of you, students, families, friends, and distinguished guests. This spring, we have an amazing mix, including bachelor's candidates from the class of 2022. The, we also have with us the class now affectionately known as 22.5. And we, have our master's <laughs> and we have our master's candidates from the Center for Development Economics and the Graduate Program of the History of Art. I also want to recognize a special group of seniors who unfortunately tested positive this week and are joining us from the balcony of Stetson Library. So a big hello to them. We are really glad you're here. We're delighted to see all of you and grateful that you've gathered from far and near for this wonderful today. As some of you know from uh, our initial invocation, this is the Jewish holiday of Shavuot, so I'd like to include a special welcome to those who are joining us while celebrating this holiday. It is wonderful to hold our first fully traditional commencement since the start of the pandemic. I also want to acknowledge those whom we hoped and expected would be here today, but who couldn't be, including people we've lost to COVID or for any other reason, and the impact of their absence on our graduates. Let's take a moment to remember them today. I know you hold them with you as we begin this celebration. With this, the college's 233rd commencement, we, we continue the tradition of flying the flags of each of the 46 countries represented by this year's graduates, colorful and inspiring symbols of the world from which our students have gathered and to which they will go forth after today. One of the nicest aspects of the weekend is being able to watch our graduates share moments with faculty and staff who have done so much to make their Williams experience productive and rewarding. 
That includes the facilities, dining, and campus safety staff who have worked and are working to make today's celebration possible. I therefore ask that we recognize all members of the Williams faculty and staff. Most prizes and fellowships awarded to members of the senior class were announced by Dean Sandstrom yesterday at Ivy Exercises. A list of the recipients, as well as lists of seniors receiving various categories of honors, can be found at the back of the commencement program. Please join me in congratulating them on their wonderful achievements. The William Bradford Turner Citizenship Prize was established in memory of Mr. Turner of the class of 1914, who was killed in action in France in 1916. The prize is awarded to that member of the graduating class whose service, leadership, and goodwill have inspired the gratitude and admiration of this community, and whose wholehearted embrace of the institution has helped us to see more clearly its highest purpose. This year's recipient has reshaped not just student life at Williams, but life at Williams. You were an influential member of our residential housing team for three years. You served with faculty and staff on a strategic planning committee that worked to envision the next 20 years of the student experience beyond the classroom. You mentored your peers at the 68 Center for Career Exploration and represented them on the Campus Committee for Diversity and Community. To quote from your award letter, it is hard to imagine how a single student could accomplish this, all the while acting as a constructive agent for change on campus. Many of us on faculty and staff regard you as a gentle and wise partner, and even a colleague. There are a few of us who are wondering just exactly how we're going to run the institution once you graduate. <laughs> We are so proud of you today, but we'll also miss you. I now have the pleasure of calling on stage this year's winner of the William Bradford Turner Citizen Prize, Essence Perry. With the ending of this academic year, eight members of our faculty are also reaching the conclusion of their Williams careers. These are people who have devoted themselves to teaching and mentoring students, often for decades. They have supported students across their four years here and often long into their lives as alumni, while also pursuing important scholarly and professional work and contributing to the life of the college. I will read citations honoring Dwayne Bailey, Ben Benedict, Jerry Caprio, Helga Druxis, Laura Heather Lori Hetherington, Paul Park, Jay Toman, and Scott Wong. What a final few years they have had. They and their colleagues have made it their life's work to educate and support our students, including today's graduates. I now have the pleasure of honoring each of them this morning. Dwayne, I begin with you. You are endlessly energetic, intellectually playful, creative, compassionate, and deeply insightful, not to mention incorrigibly irreverent. In fact, one colleague describes you as, quote, an equal opportunity lampooner of all things dopey. And not without purpose. Alumni fondly recall rant hours high-spirited lectures in which you waxed irate about technology or society's problems, all to make the point that they, as Williams, as Williams computer science graduates, would soon be in a position to do something about it. 
Between rants, you treated students to some of the most innovative, most rewarding learning experiences of their Williams careers. There is an entire Facebook group devoted just to the legendary final project from CS237. <laughs> this engrossing assignment pitted undergrads not only against classmates, but also against generations of former students in constructing highly optimized microcode. Student after student reports that your belief in them, your encouragement, and your generosity with both time and wisdom gave them the confidence to complete a sticky problem, a tough course, a difficult thesis project, or an entire major. Non-majors raved too about your courses on computer graphics and life as an algorithm. Your research takes on important problems ranging from computer architecture to abstract mathematics and most anything in between. You contributed immeasurably to computer science education worldwide with two valuable, widely adopted textbooks and associated materials. Aperiodic tiling, reprogrammable hardware, the Colette's problem, well, much of what you do is Greek to many of us. But we do understand and appreciate great teachers, great mentors, great scholars, and equal opportunity lampooners. I hereby declare you the A. Barton Hepburn Prof Professor of Computer Science Emeritus, entitled to all the rights, honors, and privileges appertaining here too. Congratulations. <laughs> Ben Benedict. Tradition says architects design buildings and builders build them. Architecture teachers teach them and students study them. But your courses turn those notions upside down. Students spend late nights in the design studio and long, inspiring weekends building the structures they'd designed. At a firm you and Carl Pucci founded 40 years ago, called improbably Bumpzoid, your work was known for being subtle and witty. You bring the same sense of style and humor to your courses, yet you also teach with a seriousness of purpose and craft. Former students who went into the architecture it, who went into architecture appreciatively remember your critiques as biting. Yet they were also inspired by your care. One remembers presenting a project that he didn't feel was his best work, yet you picked out elements that you liked and told him that you knew he wasn't proud of it yet. They also remember your parting remark at the end of your courses. If you ever get arrested, call me. You've taught about solar angles and brought in leading professionals from a range of perspectives. You've challenged students to rethink your past projects and to develop their own vernacular. And then you've swapped the books in their hands for hammers and th taught them what it's like to take an idea from concept to construction. You've even taught them mnemonic, a mnemonic pronounced as kiss lips. I don't actually know what that means, but. <laughs> He'll fill me in. Tradition says this isn't how architecture is taught. Tradition also says professors don't take their students go-karting in their backyard. Thank goodness you didn't get that memo. I hereby declare you senior lecturer in art emeritus entitled to all the rights, honors, and privileges obtaining, appertaining thereto. Congratulations. <laughs> Jerry Caprio, class of 1972. Historians don't have a monopoly on the dictum about remembering the past or repeating it. Economists must remember too. And students are amazed at your encyclopedic recall of centuries of economic catastrophe along with the attendant lessons for today's policymakers. Dot-com collapse, a bubble in Bitcoin, here you'd point out is what we might do based perhaps on what we know from the 17th century Dutch tulip mania. Historical insight and policy perspective help to explain why your courses are so popular. Also part of the magic, your field-leading research on bank regulation, 
your focus on analytical and communication skills, your sense of humor and genuine interest in students' lives and careers. You returned to your alma mater in 2006 after a long career in senior positions at the World Bank and other key institutions. As chair of the Center for Development Economics, you broadened the curriculum and built a significant endowment. You ensured that the center had the means to admit the most promising students from the neediest nations. You recruited stellar faculty members, nurtured a vibrant intellectual atmosphere, and immeasurably improved CDE facilities. CDE graduates now in 110 countries may not have all the answers. Because of you, however, they know how to ask the right questions and what to do next. We are pleased you'll continue teaching at the CDE, where thanks to another of your campaigns for excellence, they finally have a coffee maker that brews to your exacting standards. <laughs> I hereby declare you the William Broke Professor of Economics Emeritus, entitled to all the rights, honors, and privileges appertaining thereto. Congratulations. <laughs> Helga Druxis. You are a habit our students just cannot break. And they don't want to. Your exuberance and passion bring them back for course after course. Classes focusing on the German language, on literature and cinema, on cultures and ideas, on the issues and, mov and movements. Former students remember their experiences with you as some of the most influential of their lives. Your classroom is always a stimulating and enjoyable place to be. The teaching is creative and motivating. The learning is immersive and rewarding. Your insightful feedback inspires students to analyze more closely and to think more critically. We should also mention that your meals and baked goods are legendary, and you're just fun to be around. After all, as one former student says, it's not every professor who can get first years interested in accusatives, datives, and genitives at 8 AM. The breadth of both your teaching and your scholarship is phenomenal. Here are just a few of the many, many issues you address. In five books, countless other scholarly projects and your courses through the lenses of literature, film, cultural, and history, neoliberalism, feminism, Islamophobia, xenophobia, Holocaust memory, migration, digital media, hate speech, and multiculturalism. Oh, and espionage. You have an eye for style and a deep critical appreciation of literary and visual culture. Even more, you are known by your students and teaching assistants as generous and supportive, passionate and patient, humorous and dedicated. Your focus is on students' growth, both as scholars and as human beings. You always look for the opportunity to say yes. What more can we ask of a Williams professor? I hereby declare you Paul H. Hun, 55, Professor in Social Studies Emerita, entitled to all the rights, honors, and privileges appertaining thereto. Congratulations. <laughs> Lori Hetherington. Your students think of you as not just as one of the best professors ever, but as one of the best people. A scholar, teacher, and mentor of immense integrity and compassion. One alum says, yours was the only class I never cut. I can't believe I just said that out loud. You arrived in 1984 as the first clinical psychologist on the Williams faculty and one of the few at any liberal arts college. You pioneered community placements in undergraduate clinical psych courses. You changed pedagogy nationwide and laid a foundation for Williams' focus on experiential learning. Your research interests include previously underexplored questions about family therapy. The measures and methodologies you developed transformed the specialty from theory to empirical science. Faculty across departments respect you as a leader, recalling among many contributions your management of a college-wide curriculum review. There are also the stories students share. 
about your work as a master quilter, about how you sewed masks for them in the pandemic when masks were hard to come by, about legendary meals at your home and how you once calmly left in the middle of class because it was time to have a baby. Many of them credit you not just for their careers, but their values and the way they aspire to live. As devoted as you are, you're equally committed to Gould Farm, another important Berkshire County institution. Nearly three decades as board member and collaborator, you have led staff there to think of you as simply the real deal and someone who, quote, embodies what it means to be human. We enthusiastically agree. I hereby declare you Edward Dorr Griffin Professor of Psychology Emerita, entitled to all the rights, honors, and privileges appertaining thereto. <laughs> Paul Claiborne Park. In one of your many highly regarded works of speculative fiction, a certain quiet Massachusetts college town turns out to be something else entirely. You two are really something else. When you return to this quiet college town, you are already a highly accomplished and globally admired author. You are also no stranger, son of two legends of the faculty, brother of an equally beloved member of staff, you had grown up here. If, however, Williams has been a part of who you are, you are also a significant part of what Williams has become. You've taught so many students to appreciate the art and craft of inventing alternative worlds. You've helped so many over the years to imagine their own. That would have been a success enough. But when the college perceived a need for intensive courses in expository writing, it was to a master of literary writing that we turned. You devised an altogether ingenious approach that made students not only successful writers, but also successful students. Your former undergraduate and graduate students say they use what you taught them every day. Thanks to you, they write creatively, effectively, and with confidence. Thanks to you, they have found and believe in their voices. They admire your passion, appreciate your humor, and commend your humanity. Wherever they go and whatever they do, they apply your ideas, your techniques, and even more importantly, your example of diligence and kindness. I hereby declare you the Senior Lecturer in English Emeritus entitled to all the rights, honors, and privileges appertaining thereto. Congratulations. John W. J. Toman Jr., class of 1982. <laughs> Students simply adore your teaching. Appropriately, for a physical chemist, you emit energy. Sorry. <laughs> they absorb it. As you bound around classrooms that always feel too small for your lanky frame, they eagerly fill their notebooks with concepts, equations, and your hysterical quips. You take great delight in instruction. You go all out to support every student. Your lectures are renowned for clarity. Your in-class demonstrations are celebrated, and some are literally explosive. In the lab, you shine laser light onto molecules to unlock their deepest secrets. You've also developed a focus on environmental chemistry, characterizing PCBs, heavy metals, and other contamination here in the Berkshires. In both lines of work, you are a generous collaborator. In both, your, in both, your students learn chemistry and analytic techniques ordinarily not taught until graduate school. A stalwart on powerhouse Williams swimming teams as an undergraduate, you have remained a team player. You leaped in wherever needed in chemistry. In environmental studies, you were a key contributor to the introductory course. Somehow, you've also found time nearly every year to teach your wildly popular winter study in glass blowing. And talk about a team player. 
You held the demanding role of car college marshal for seven years. You ensured that Williams ceremonies like this one proceeded with the optimal balance of solemnity and joy, tradition and efficiency. It is more than apt that since 2008, you have held a chair endowed in honor of a Williams icon, your mentor and, Fredge, and friend, Hodge McGrath. Like Hodge, you love students, you love chemistry, and you loved Williams. I hereby declare you the J. Hodge McGrath Professor of Chemistry Emeritus, entitled to all the rights, honors, and privileges pertaining thereto. Scott Wong. What a long, strange trip it's been. <laughs> You've taught courses that carried students from the Trojan War to Vietnam encouraged them to find the history of America in family photo albums, helped alumni bridge the connections between mindfulness and fly fishing. Your personal interests are as varied as your academic ones, which is why one former student still remembers asking about your sabbatical plans, and you said, I'm going to learn to cook a really good fried chicken. But while you know how to have fun, you're dead serious about scholarship and teaching. Your research on Chinese American life during the late 1800s and early 1900s helped shape the field of Asian American studies. Typical student reminiscences say, quote, growing up as a child of immigrants, it was incredibly eye-opening to be able to contextualize my own life in the scope of history. And quote, Dr. Wong sent me on a path where I could pursue answers to the questions most relevant to my life. You're as beloved by the many faculty you've mentored as you are by the seniors whose theses you've supervised. Over time, you made your story part of the Williams stories, too, laying the groundwork for our new Asian American Studies program. Now your papers will be preserved in the Chapin Library because in the process of teaching and studying history, you've made Williams history yourself. There's plenty more of that story to come. To paraphrase one of your favorite artists, Bob Dylan, though the line is cut, it ain't quite the end, so we'll just bid farewell till we meet again. I thereby declare you Charles R. Keller Professor of History Emeritus, entitled to all the rights, honors, and privileges appertaining thereto. <laughs> Congratulations. Can I have another big round of applause for all of our retiring faculty? It is my pleasure to invite Will, your class musician, to perform, who will be accompanied by Peter. Say people go, say people go This particular time was extra special And though you might be gone, the world may not know Still I see your celestial Like a lion you ran God is your own, like an eagle you circle, in perfect purple, so how come things move on, how come cars don't slow, when it feels like the end of my world, when I 
crush you, but I can't let you go. Since 1795, seniors have spoken from the commencement stage. Indeed, in early years, all seniors spoke from the commencement stage. The present wise practice of limiting the student speakers to three members of the class began in 1901. One speaker is chosen by the class, one is selected by the Phi Beta Kappa Society, and the last speaker is our valedictorian. It is my pleasure to introduce our class speaker, Michael Medvedev. Good morning, everyone, and congratula congratulations to the class of 2022. For those that don't know me, my name is Michael Medvedev, but most of my friends call me Misha, Russian for Michael. And in the fall of 2020, I took my first sunrise hike. Every Friday before dawn, for decades, Scott Lewis, the director of the Williams Outing Club, leads a group of half-awake students up Pine Cobble Hill to watch the sunrise over the Purple Valley. I wasn't a particularly outdoorsy person before arriving at Williams, but given that the pandemic had reduced the number of activities on campus, I decided to go for it. I set an alarm for 4.45 a.m. 
When it went off the next morning, I, cur I cursed at myself. I certainly hadn't gotten my eight hours, and I definitely did not feel like hiking. But something told me I should go for it. So I rolled out of bed and trudged across campus. Scott was waiting for us, smiling, as he always is. And as we made up our way pine cobble, it seemed that the clouds hanging over Williamstown would prevent us from seeing the sunrise. When we got to the top, though, the clouds had parted, and Williamstown glowed in the early fall dawn. On our way home, I thought to myself, imagine if I hadn't gotten out of bed, and I'd been this close to snoozing that alarm. Indeed, at Williams and elsewhere, there are so many moments like the one at 4.45 a.m. We were given a choice between being rational, getting much needed sleep after a late night in Sawyer, or doing something a little less rational and a little more risky. And to be fair, going on a sunrise hike isn't that risky, especially with an expert like Scott. But I did it, and I did it on a whim. Williams, as the liberal arts cliche goes, teaches us how to think. And between the class discussions, problem sets, papers, exams, and group projects, we've done our fair share of thinking. Some more than others, most more than me. But today, our paths diverge. So what now? Now, we must do. Doing requires taking risks. And to me, taking risks requires a healthy dose of delusion. In fact, my closest friend here says that my best quality is my abundance of delusion. And maybe he's right. After all, I've dreamed of speaking at graduation since my freshman year here, despite the B minus I earned in my high school public speaking class. And here I am. By the way, Mom, thanks for reminding me of that one. <laughs> There's an old Chinese proverb about doing that stuck with me. It goes, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago, and the second best time is now. And so, as some of you know, 18 months ago, in an attempt to do, I took a massive risk. In hindsight, without much thought, I took out a bank loan and created Earth Cups, a company that tries to combat plastic pollution through its production of plant-based products and cups. And while there have been countless bumps along the way, we're working towards something that will have a positive impact. As importantly, my co-founder and I have learned how to grow a business, take on risk, build a team, start a movement. We planted our tree, and it's growing. And so, on this beautiful June morning, I encourage each and every one of you to identify your tree and to go plant it. And by taking risks, being a little delusional, and doing it, maybe without too much thought, each one of us can, in our own unique ways, begin to embody the simple message written on Hopkins Gate, which we've all walked by, but not through, a thousand times, which reads, climb high, climb far, your goal the sky, your aim the stars. So, I want to toast each one of you, if you'll give me a second chance. You are remarkably resilient. You have pivoted a few times these last few years. Don't let thinking hinder your doing. Take risks. Plant your tree, even if it might not grow. Wake up and go for the hike. And even if you don't see the sunrise, you might just learn something on the way down. To the class of 2022, aim for the stars. You're not far from them now. Thank you. Our Phi Beta Kappa speaker is Irene Lowenson.
Good morning, all. To pass the time in the early months of the pandemic, I read David Foster Wallace's masterwork, Infinite Jest, became a chess grandmaster, and taught myself to play the clarinet. Just kidding. <laughs> but I did watch a lot of rom-coms. I watched one called Sliding Doors, starring Gwyneth Paltrow. If you've seen it, great. If not, that's OK, too. It begins as the main character, Helen, rushes to catch a train home. As she runs towards the train's sliding doors, the movie splits into two alternate storylines. In one, Helen catches the train. In the other, the doors slam shut before she can hop on board. If Helen catches the train, she gets home in time to find her boyfriend cheating on her. After breaking up with him, she finds a way better boyfriend and opens up her own business. Terrific. But if she misses the train, Helen's life almost immediately changes for the worse. Not so terrific. What about our time at Williams? We can think, ugh, if only the pandemic had not disrupted our time in the Purple Valley. If only our precious handful of years here had gone more or less as we'd expected. If only, well, then everything would have been so much better. It's tempting, but if onlys don't get us anywhere, they allow us to forget about the experiences that we've had because of the pandemic. Some of them good, many of them less good, all of them formative. Which brings me back to that Gwyneth Paltrow rom-com, Sliding Doors. If you don't want me to spoil it for you, cover your ears. At the end of the movie, we realize that what seemed like the good storyline, where Helen catches the train, catches out the bad boyfriend, and remakes her life, turns out to lead to a bad outcome. And the missed train version eventually leads to a perfectly fine outcome. I am not saying that we ended up in a better place because of the pandemic. I don't believe that. No one believes that. The pandemic has been hard. Too many of us have suffered profound losses. All of us have endured fear, stress, and dislocation. But I do believe that we should reflect on how we've grown from this strange experience of attending college in a pandemic. Let's not, let's not think about our time at Williams as it might have been or as it could have been. Let's think about it as it was. As it was includes students staying in touch with each other while campus was shut down through postcards and online poker, through Snapchat, and a group chat dedicated to salmon lovers. As it was includes our professors working so hard to teach us and look out for us through those Zoom screens. As it was includes the unfailing kindness of the staff who kept this campus running. As it was includes our gratitude when we were stuck in our dorm rooms and our friends left us food outside our doors. And as it was includes now, on this beautiful day, when we gather with family and friends to reflect on how much we have learned and grown during these years. Our college years, as they were, prepared us for life better than pandemic-free college years would have. Because life, just like the last few years, will be full of challenges. It will also be full of joys, small ones and, we hope, big ones. And above all, it will be full of twists and turns. We will be ready for those twists and turns. Sometimes, we'll miss the train. Some things will not go according to plan. But we can still prevail. That is something our time at Williams has taught us. Congratulations to the members of the greatest class in the history of this great college, the class of 2022.
Our final student speaker, we welcome the valedictorian of the class of 2022, Philippe Nowinski. empty pages here. Awesome sound. Hi everyone. My name is Filip Niewinski and I am incredibly grateful to have the chance to share some of my thoughts with you today. I am actually grateful for quite a bit more than that. You know, I've been thinking a lot about gratitude lately. I am an international student from Poland and when I was applying to colleges back in 2017, which kind of feels like 20 years ago, um, I really had no idea what Williams had in store for me. Here, we've all been given incredible opportunities through the resources of the college, our own hard work and newfound friendships, we've cultivated within us knowledge, skills and connections that will last throughout our professional and personal lives. When I first arrived here at Williams, I was incredibly nervous. You know, coming to the United States to study felt like I was living someone else's story. But I was always shown kindness and patience. I was always given a chance to grow. And importantly, I was given the trust to take risks. That to me is truly humbling, that I was extended the grace and resources to develop my own strengths and discover my limitations. And that's not to say the process is easy. We've all worked incredibly hard, and we should all be proud of that and celebrate. After today, we, the class of 2022, will be entering the world at large. There's no doubt in my mind that many among us will go and hold positions of leadership and great influence. Not me, I'll be a physicist. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a humble request for each of you. Remember that our success is born of both hard work and opportunity. Hard work comes from the individual, but opportunity stems from external factors that we can't always control. Extend to others the kindness that was extended to a nervous Polish student. Fellow classmates, they told me this where you stand up. Sorry, I didn't make the rules. Life can sometimes be pretty uncertain and, let's be honest, a little scary, but as we move through life, we can carve out spaces for others to shelter. Just as we were given opportunities, provide others with chances to grow. Let us enter the next phase of our lives with humility and gratitude. Let us look for the best in others, encourage the best in others. Let us lead by example and never forget how fortunate we all are. Thank you. You can be seated, thank you. That's how he gets a standing ovation, you see. Okay, at this point in the program, we award honorary degrees to individuals of great accomplishment. Each of them has contributed significantly to the good of our society in their own unique way. By honoring them and sharing a little bit of their life story, we hope to inspire you, the graduates, to make your own impact in the world. Our first honoree, Debbie Allen, was regretfully unable to be here today. However, we will read her citation and award her degree in abstentia in recognition of her accomplishments. Debbie Allen, your resume is dazzling. Actor, dancer, author, choreographer, director, producer, patron, mentor, and muse. But you had to teach people to see the light. As a preteen, your gifts were overlooked by ballet academies fixated on skin color and body type. Your mother, Vivian, a renowned artist, scholar, and author, moved your family to Mexico to prevent prejudice from damping your creative spark. Fortunately, your spirit was unquenched and your talent undimmed. Fifteen years later, 
on a summer replacement show called Three Girls Three, you danced your way into American home and hearts. Then came the casting call for fame, and fame came calling. A brilliant career followed. You produced and or directed everything from A Different World to Amistad to All of Us, and played acclaimed roles in everything from Cat on the Hot Tin Roof to Grey's Anatomy. You're a US cultural ambassador of dance, a Kennedy Center artist in residence, recipient of three Emmys, a Golden Globe, five NAACP Image Awards, a Drama Desk Award, an Astaire Award for Best Dancer, an Olivier Award, and a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. But your shining accomplishment has been the creation of the Debbie Allen Dance Academy. For 20 years, the Academy has been a beacon for underprivileged children in Los Angeles, helping them find joy and meaning through dance, theater, and performance. For years, you've reminded audiences that the next step beyond failure could be your biggest success in life. As a torchbearer for creativity and compassion, you've brought light into the lives of so many others as well. I hereby declare you recipient of the honorary degree of Doctor of Fine Arts, entitled to all the rights, honors, and privileges appertaining thereto. <laughs> Father Gregory J. Boyle. Your Catholic order requires that Jesuits stand as men for others. You stand for Los Angeles men and women caught up in the poverty, hopelessness, and violence that at one point resulted in 1,000 gang-related killings a year. Another Jesuit precept is attention not only to the soul, but also cura personalis, care for the entire person. You walked the streets day and night, risking bullets to save lives and talk enemy gangs back from the brink. Then you founded Homeboy Industries, now the world's largest gang rehabilitation and prison reentry program. Homeboy serves thousands of clients with education, workplace readiness, job training, mental health, art therapy, domestic violence intervention, and anti-hunger programs. Homeboy's dedication to the whole person extends even to removal of thousands of gang markings and other tattoos a year. Yet another Jesuit val value, eloquentia perfecta. An indefatigable public speaker and author, you eloquently spread the gospel, both the large G and small. You remind us always to, quote, stand with the demonized so the demonizing will stop to stand with the disposable so that the day will come when we stop throwing people away, to stand always with the poor and the powerless and the voiceless. Finally, Jesuits seek to live ad majorum de gloriam et bonum animarum. Sorry, I'm working on my Latin. <laughs> I had a little coaching, but still a little weak. For the greater glory of God and the well-being of people, we cannot presume to speak for God, but we know that the people of East Los Angeles, this country, and this world are the better for your ministry of compassionate action. I hereby declare you recipient of the honorary degree Doctor of Laws, entitled to all the rights, honors, and privileges appertaining thereto. Biddy Martin. <laughs> College presidents are supposed to give grand speeches and make bold proclamations. The greatness of your leadership lies not in lecturing, but in listening. How many Amherst students have stories of being invited for a ride in your golf course? or of you showing up at their all-night sit-ins. You've never been shy about speaking up, but your most remarkable talent is for making other people feel heard and seen. Well, that and puzzles. Nor is your drive limited to golf carts. During your presidency, Amherst has been in high gear academically and in its diversity work. 
Most of your incoming class next fall are people of color and fully a quarter qualify for Pell Grants, a long way from where Amherst was when you arrived. In the same year that John F. Kennedy visited Amherst, he gave a famous speech about the space program. He said, quote, we do these things not because they are easy, but because they are hard and because the challenge is one that we are unwilling to postpone and which we intend to win. For some people, the chances of diversifying a historically elite college seemed as remote as a moonshot, but you've always done the hard things, whether becoming Brookville High's all-time top scorer in women's basketball, breaking ground as Amherst's first woman president, or getting on horseback to reenact Zephaniah Swift-Moore's absconding from Williamstown, <laughs> you've intended to win. And to a remarkable degree, you have won, not always on the field, but where it really counts. I hereby declare you recipient, recipient of the honorary degree of Doctor of Laws entitled to all the rights, honors, and privileges appertaining thereto. So we do have one more piece of business. So Biddy and I are actually, have we've become close friends over and through the pandemic. And we're not supposed to admit that publicly, but you know, <laughs> it's a small club uh, and running a college in a pandemic is a challenging uh, time. And now uh, Biddy is an honorary Eve. She has joined our community and as such, it seems uh, only appropriate um, that we issue a formal pardon which we have, <laughs> right here. So for those who don't know the story, in brief, Amherst was founded by a rogue Williams president who supposedly took 650 stolen library books out of our library, a couple of faculty and students, and absconded over the hill with them. Now, we put some hard-thinking minds to work and calculated just how many how much money we are owed by Amherst in library <laughs> fees at a rate of 12 cents a week per book since 1821. With the inflation adjusted uh, overdue fines in hand, we simply are asking for $39,058,890. But just in case that's not in the cards, we will give you this official pardon to take back with you and study. Thank you. <laughs> Betty Reed Soskin. You've lived a life that can only be called riveting. As a child, you survived the most destructive flood in American history. In the wake of the Great Flood, your family joined the Great Migration, moving from Louisiana to Oakland in search of opportunity and relief from racism. During the 1940s, you broke down barriers by opening one of the only black-owned record stores in the country with your first husband. Meanwhile, you put up a front against racism in the Air Force and even at home, where you received death threats for integrating suburban neighborhood. In the 1960s, you built a reputation as a songwriter in the civil rights movement while helping the Black Panthers feed the people of Oakland. By the 1990s, you were driving the agenda for two California State Assembly women while helping plan the Rosie the Riveter World War II Homefront National Historical Park. Following a public talk by the park superintendent, you screwed up your courage and talked to her about racism in the war effort, which was too often obscured behind Rosie's smiling popular image. How did she respond? By hiring you. You became the oldest and undoubtedly one of the most courageous rangers in the whole natural, national park system, educating visitors from around the world about history, not just as you'd learned it, but as you had lived it. Rosie had better move over and make some room. We think you're the one who nailed it. 
I hereby declare you recipient of the honorary degree Doctor of Laws entitled to all the rights, honors, and privileges appertaining thereto. John Meacham. Hope, equality, freedom, faith, glory, compromise. These are both keywords from your book titles and keystones of your vision of America. Your books have taken us from the hustings of Gettysburg to the ramparts of the Edmund Pettus Bridge and taken the measure of this country at both its highest and lowest moments. For you, America is, well, complicated. Characteristically, the Pulitzer Prize jury praised your biography of Andrew Jackson as a, quote, unflinching portrait of a not always admirable Democrat, but a significantly transformative president. The fra that phrase, not always admirable, but transformative, amply describes the country you've shown us so unflinchingly, a country of virtues and flaws, big ideas and sometimes small-mindedness, a nation made up of individual people whose lives are buoyed by the swells and currents of history. Your topics have ranged from Jesus on the cross to Nixon in the Oval Office, and your career choices have been almost as varied. In addition to a best-selling and Pulitzer Prize-winning author, you've been a Newsweek editor, executive editor at Random House, frequent guest on Morning Joe, and contributing writer somehow for both the New York Times Book Review and Garden and Gun magazine. <laughs> In one venue after another, you've explored the questions of who we are and what we are about. You've sought the inner drama of a nation and its people in a continuous act of self-creation. That process of self-invention is far from complete. Thank goodness you'll be here to narrate the next chapter. I hereby declare you recipient of the honorary degree of letters entitled to all the rights, honors, and privileges appertaining thereto. So it is one of our customs to ask one of our honored guests to speak on behalf of the entire group of recipients of an honorary degree. This year we will have the pleasure of hearing from John Meacham. I must say, given the Amherst Williams thing, I, I'm a southerner, I feel as though I've stumbled into someone else's family reunion. <laughs> uh, and I think that when you stand here, and you all are about to be honored as well, and I think I can speak for Dr. Boyle and Dr. Soskin uh, and President Martin as well, you begin to think that, yeah, maybe you are all those things. You know, Maybe you are an important voice for this or that. And I was standing right here, and I was thinking, my mind went back, it's been 12 years ago now. I was on the uh, Washington Mall at the National Book Festival, and I was on my way at that point to give my talk about Andrew Jackson. And a woman ran up to me, which doesn't happen enough. <laughs> or ever, actually. And she said, oh my God, it's you. And I said, well, yes, you know. It's existentially speaking, that's hard to argue with, you know. I'm from Tennessee, so I have to leave the state to use existential as an adverb, so thank you. Um, <laughs> And I was, she said, your books have meant so much to me. I, my family loves them. Will you wait right here? I'm going to go buy your new book and have you sign it. And I said, yes, ma'am. And I thought, this is the way the world is supposed to be. You know? Hand to God, she brought back John Grisham's latest novel. <laughs> so whenever I think I deserve anything, I remind myself that somewhere in America, there's a woman with a forged copy of The Runaway Jury, right? Because I signed it, you know. Um, I will tell you quickly the second part of that story, which is true as, as well. Uh, I, I was at that point writing a book about George Herbert Walker Bush, uh, President Bush. It took me 17 years. It was supposed to be posthumous, but the son of a bitch wouldn't die. Um, sorry say, not going to do it. Um, that was for your parents, trust me. Um, 
But I, and for some reason, I was going to Maine, and it was just the three of us at lunch that day. It was President Bush and Mrs. Bush and me, and that was very unusual. Bush world was like a wasp Epcot, right? I mean, <laughs> the Oak Ridge boys would be playing golf, Billy Graham would be playing tennis, Gorbachev would be making coffee. It was a, that literally all happened once. But it was just us. And I told this story about being mistaken for Grisham. And I will confess to you, my fellow graduates of the class of 2022, that it was an entirely transparent attempt to get either the former president or the former first lady to say, oh, you're so much more important than John Grisham, <laughs> right? So I had cast out the bait for a compliment. And Barbara Bush looks across the table in that inimitable way of hers and says, what? how do you think poor John Grisham would feel? You know, he's a very handsome man. So, it was a bad weekend. You're having a much better one. Uh, I am grateful to President Maud, uh, whom I, I've been ordered to call her that, uh, to the faculty and the trustees for their kind invitation to be here. I'm uh, genuinely humbled to be here. Uh, if I may, I think I can speak for the, uh, the three of us with Dr. Soskin. So thank you for uh, allowing us to be here. Um, I'm a graduate of the University of the South in Sewanee, Tennessee. There may be one or two of you who don't know it well. Um, it's best understood as a combination of Downton Abbey and Deliverance. And, um, but I'm a big, big believer in small liberal arts institutions. Uh, there have been Williams people in my life uh, Michael Beschloss, uh, Mika Brzezinski, who rolls her eyes at me at 6.02 a.m. Uh, from the class of 1989. So I will uh, presume to say that I, I feel quite at home. Uh, I know I'm the only thing standing between you and the rest of your life, so I'll be brief. Uh, let's begin at the beginning. <laughs> the world has turned over many times since you've been in it. Uh, most of you who are receiving your degrees were born about 21 years ago, right? 22 years ago. George W. Bush was president. Donald Trump was a year away from launching The Apprentice. Gas cost $1.59 a gallon. The biggest movie of the year when you were born was Spider-Man, which competed against Star Wars Episode II, Attack of the Clones, which proves that redemption is not always possible. The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, Austin Powers in Goldmember, My Big Fat Greek Wedding, and somewhat less grandly, Jackass the Movie. <laughs> On television, CSI, Friends, American Idol, Survivor, ER, and Will and Grace dominated the culture. The Dow Industrial Average was about 9,000 points. You were beginning elementary school when Barack Obama became the first black president in American history. You were here when the deadliest pandemic in a century struck and when a defeated president sought to steal an election, inspiring the first insurrection against our capital in the history of the Republic. So you understand history. You've already lived through a good bit of it. So what is the lesson of our past? I think one is that from the beaches of Normandy to the rending of the Iron Curtain, from Harriet Tubman to Alice Paul to John Robert Lewis, we have made the American experiment worth defending, just barely, but we have done so. We're our best selves when we build bridges and not walls, when we lend a hand rather than clench a fist, and when we act out of generosity and not greed. In those moments, America gets much right. But honesty compels us to admit that we get an awful lot wrong as well. But how could we not? A democracy is the sum of its parts, and we are its parts. The sinful and the selfish, the self-satisfied, that's us. And democracy is the fullest manifestation of our own aspirations and appetites. So we endure, driven by the hope that someday we might prevail, and for all of our manifold failings, the story of the American past is that we can overcome the darkness. I don't need to tell you that history awaits you. We're living in American democracy's hour 
of maximum danger. That is not hyperbole. It's an age of declining trust and growing extremism, a spread of lies and an erosion of truth, and the premacy of brute power and a deadly dearth, a deadly dearth of compassion and of neighborliness. Again, not hyperbole. It's the raw, discernible fact of the matter. You're graduating into a country in great peril. We do ourselves no favors by pretending it's different. This is not an ordinary hour of political division and debate. Now, I should say, I am not a Republican, nor am I a Democrat. I try to see things clearly. And so here, for what it's worth, is what I see. Our capital and our Constitution have been stormed. Decades of precedent over the most difficult and personal choices a person can make are at risk. Many choose to support the indiscriminate deployment of weapons of war within a civilian population, enabling the massacres of the innocent in our schools and in our stores and in our streets. And the capacity of our institutions to address the future climate of the planet itself is, to put it kindly, the most open of questions. These are the facts of the hour. It is also a fact and a consoling one that this place has prepared you for lives of entrepreneurial citizenship. Look at the guy who got a B minus in public speaking. <laughs> Your mother reminded you of that, is that right? Yeah, there's some future therapist here who's gonna make some money off this guy. <laughs> Take the extra hour. The faculty gets that, so that's good. Um, Entrepreneurial citizenship is about a devotion to justice, to the pursuit of happiness, not only for yourself, but for your friends, your families, and your neighbors near and far, known and unknown. I want to emphasize this word neighbor. One of the greatest, now this is a, a small category, it's like 20th century French military victories, but one of the greatest tweets is that uh, someone some time ago posted something saying, that if Mr. Rogers and Doris Goodwin had had a love child, I would have resulted. <laughs> I insist on taking that as a compliment. Doris was upset. She wanted to say, oh, no, we fell in love. I said, no, no, no. He picked you up in the C-SPAN bar. That's, that's the way this works. Without understanding that we have to see each other as neighbors, democracy doesn't work. And you don't have to love your neighbor. You should. If everybody loved their neighbor, we wouldn't have had to have a commandment about it. But we do have to respect our neighbors because that guarantees our own rights. Respecting someone else's rights is the fundamental covenant of democracy. The kinds of the citizenship you have been prepared for has created great change in America. And it comes when creative and engaged people believe that they can bend that arc of a moral universe toward justice. But let me be clear. That arc will not bend if people do not insist that it swerve. That's the dialectic. If you remember nothing else, be a swerver. Insist, work, think but understand that a more perfect union requires us, requires you to see each other as fellow human beings and not as adversaries and enemies. The abolitionists who campaigned against slavery, the suffragists who fought for the ballot, the young who rose up from a segregated South to demand that the Jeffersonian assertion of human equality naturally applies to all, not just to some, these are your models. They swerve. Study them, learn from them, emulate them. Democracy only succeeds when we choose, and it is a choice, to give as well as to take. And the story of humankind from Eden forward is that we would rather take than give. 
democracy then is forever vulnerable, but it's also, therefore, forever possible if we heed the lessons of conscience and history. And I think those lessons are these. From Seneca Falls to Selma to Stonewall, we have moved the world closer to liberty and away from tyranny. And the future belongs to those people in power and far from it who insist on giving all of us what Lincoln called an open field and a fair chance. And here's how I know the future belongs to those people, because the past belongs to those people. And if that seems overly grand or hopelessly gauzy, remember, flawed people, driven by appetite and ambition, seeking to be kind but subject to cruelty, they did it not so long ago. And if they could overcome, then we can as well. And in that history, I would argue, lies our hope. A couple of quick pieces of advice. Uh, please, 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 don't let any single cable network or Twitter feed tell you what to think. Think for yourself. You'll be delighted with the result. So be curious, be gracious, be hopeful. If you're so inclined, say your prayers and seek the means of grace and the hope of glory. Love your neighbor, try to. Take naps outside on a summer afternoon. Read Jane Austen and Anthony Trollope. Read as many detective stories, the English department likes that. Uh, read as many detective stories as you can find. Go to the movies themselves. Subscribe to newspapers and magazines, please. Vote in each and every election. And before you post an opinion, do think twice. Because just because you have the means to express an opinion quickly does not mean you have an opinion worth expressing quickly. <laughs> Never be embarrassed to put your hand over your heart and stand up for the national anthem. And this is an important one, and you're not going to understand some of the words I'm using. Write thank you notes on real paper. <laughs> now, paper, never mind. <laughs> Try to look up from those phones. And above all, remember in hours of joy and darkness that Williams has taught you that the test of the ages is not whether you lead the good life but a good life. Godspeed. Thank you so much, John. So now in this brief moment where the sun has gone behind the cloud for 10 seconds to let you cool off, uh, it is my great pleasure to ask Dean Sandstroms to present the candidates for degrees. But before I do, I do want to acknowledge another special group who I mentioned in passing before. The class of 22.5, as we call them, includes more than 80 students who have arrived as part of the class of 22 and still identify as such. Because they took time off, often because of the pandemic, they're invited to attend next year's ceremony to complete their degree requirements. But in every other sense, they're part of this year's class, and many are here today. Can we please celebrate them by giving them a round of applause? President Mandel, on behalf of the faculty, I have the honor to present the following candidates for the degree of Master of Arts in Art History. Emil Korb, 
in absentia. Mason Cummings. Chris Fernald. McLean Groff. Claire LaRue. Ade Omotosho in absentia. Here. <laughs> Fabulous. Amber Orozco in absentia. Byron Otis. Crystal Perez. And Yuafang Wu. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Arts in Art History entitled to all the rights, honors, and privileges appertaining thereto. Congratulations. <laughs> President Mandel, on behalf of the faculty, I have the honor to present the following fellows at the Center for Development Economics for the degree of Master of Arts in Policy Economics. Hiden Betty Alassan, South Sudan. <laughs> Nilza Machado Antonio Solari, Angola. <laughs> Abdullah Asifi from Afghanistan. <laughs> Elizabeth Aiva, Ghana. Mohammed Anisur Rahman Bali, Bangladesh. <laughs> Kanchan Bosnet, Nepal. <laughs> Babita Badarai, Nepal. <laughs> Jean Louis Blanc, Cote d'Ivoire. Ganshameg Budracha, Mongolia. <laughs> Boyi T. Tu Na, Vietnam. <laughs> Mulenga Chaibela, Zambia. <laughs> Ruan Suranga Gunavardanye, Sri Lanka. George Kamau, Kenya. Patrick Kupgang Semu, Cameroon. Mary Kutngule, Malawi. Dallas Lim, Cambodia. Sakina Maman Luan Nafiu, Niger. Ainora Mambeku Kazi, the Kyrgyz Republic. Josephine Chioma Mambuagbo, Cameroon. Moses Musantu, Zambia. Rachel Nuamanya, Uganda. <laughs> Abiba Patuakomsha, Cameroon. 
Tendri Rakutudranaya, Madagascar. Mina Ryan, Afghanistan. Sihoang Sam, Cambodia. Omar Sen, Senegal. P. Lama Malik Sirion, Liberia. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Arts in Policy Economics entitled to all the rights, honors, and privileges appertaining thereto. Congratulations. President Mandel, on behalf of the faculty, I have the honor to present the following candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Mohazab Abdullah, in absentia. Zainab Sude Akundodu. Jaya Lakshmi Nicole Aligar. Sakib Alim. Gina Ziad. Al Karablia on the balcony. <laughs> Noor Al Serafi. <laughs> Kristen Ann Altman, summa cum laude. <laughs> Nicholas John Altman. Nicole Marie Alvarez. Theodore Philip Anderson. Daniel Astudio. Nadia Ladmela Atkinson. Ginger Diamond Atwood. Leanne Tomoka Ow on the balcony. <laughs> Jose Christopher Avila in absentia. <laughs> Wumi Awiliwa. <laughs> Wael Baabalki in absentia. Benjamin Martin Bailey on the balcony. <laughs> Jet Jacob Valentine. <laughs> Laura Ann Berry in absentia. Benjamin Stokes Barton in absentia. Christopher Walker Bassett. <laughs> Jacob Joseph Basile. Oliver Behrens. Liza Berg, in absentia. Veronica Renee Berger. Margot Cantor Berman. Jackson Steed. Bibbins, Andrew Philip Bigelow, Tia Lorray Birdsong in absentia, 
Jackson Smith Bishoping. Magdalena Blaze. Alicia Christina Blanco in absentia. Emily Margaret Blyberg. William Jeremy Bach. Siri Hansen Bohacek. Thomas Rudolph Bono. Kendra Brenya. David Austin Brewer. Andrew Martin Brito. Henry J. Brody. Rebecca Gail Brody. Courtney Alexandra Brown. Madeline Grace Burbage. Christopher Dane Burdick. Justin Charles Burke on the balcony. Mina Burns. Elizabeth May Burris Wells, summa cum laude. Yasmina Maria Cabrera. Caroline McConnell Case. Julia Ann Hayes Cassell. Galen Patrick Cassidy. Sasha Kayward. Max Young Chayette. Derek Chen in absentia. Emily Yua Chen. William L. Chen. Kieran Chung. Tiffany Chor. Young Jin Chong. Alexander Christ. Smaragda Krisulaki. Christopher Chung in absentia. Peter Larrabee Churchill in absentia. Sophia Maya Clement. Pauline Carla Cochran. Jesse Wolf. Cohen, Noah Cohen Greenberg, Rain Martin Condi, Justin Elliott Connell on the balcony, Tyler Michael Cooligan. Alexis Abigail Cooper. Jaden Scott Cooper. Quinton Joshua Cooper. <laughs> Maya Jade Hordes. Bernal Cortez. Nicholas Couch in absentia. Caitlin Elizabeth Coyne. Rebecca Everett Coyne. Molly Catherine Craig. Brian Alexander Crane. 
Alessandra Emma Cruz. Kenya Esmeralda Cruz Cuadrado. <laughs> Deja Renee Cunningham. Eva Louise Daly. Grace Marin Daly. Natalie Victoria Davidson. Carla De La Fuente. <laughs> Jessica De Luz Santos. Casey Johanna Delano. James Patrick Delano. Devin Anand Desai. Adam Dion. Clarissa Dominguez. Abdurrahman Casso Donka. Emma Maria Draper. Connor James Dubiel. Aiden Willem Dunkelberg on the balcony. Avery Michelle Dunn in absentia. Irfan Dermich. Madeline Montgomery Dyke in absentia. Tahim Kelvan Edwards in absentia. Jacob Meyer Eisner on the balcony. <laughs> Eve Quinn Elizondo. Sydney Hunter Ellison. Polly Hastings Elman. Dara Elizabeth Etienne. Liz Astry Ferguson. Aiden Michael Fuhrer. L. Marie Feetsum. Scott Aaron Feinberg. Alejandro Flores Monge. Garnet Leroy Nikachev Flowers. William Chapin Foote Jr. Jonathan Weed Forrest. Lauren Virginia Fossil. Owen Clarkson Foster. Peter Hood Valentine Freelingheisen III. Catherine Darcy Friedman. Allison Marie Prasan in absentia. Armani Joel Fuentes in absentia. Madison Alita Fulcher Melendy. Gina Renee Galvan. Georgia Marie Ganser. Leslie Athilana Garcia. Ree Garcia. K. 
Kevin Garcia Rios, in absentia. Madeline Yuki Godlitz. Eobel Gabre. Kaylin N. Gibson. Michael Gibson Prue on the balcony. Alexandra Pope Giles. Kayla Gilman in absentia. Lily Nacy Goldberg. Jake Harrison Goldfarb. Jonah Daniel Martinez Goldstein. Sam Tidings Golub. Nicholas Gonzalez on the balcony. Fernanda Gonzalez. Daniel Gonzalez, Jr. Grace Lee Goodall. Mackenzie Donovan Grace. Olivia Isabel Graceffa. Gabrielle Marie Granada. Kate Nicole Gregory. Ariane Grossman. Justin Lamar Gunn. <laughs> Vanessa Anai Garola Mariscal. <laughs> Brian Ha. Jason Ha. Jake Ingram Hasi. Malia Ashton Pagino. Leo Lamb Haynes. Megan Mary Halloran in absentia. Alex Lee Hahn in absentia. Oh, in he here. <laughs> Haley S. Hahn up on the balcony. <laughs> Kayla Hahn on the balcony. <laughs> Charlotte Glenn Veith. Hansen on the balcony. <laughs> Kelsey Lynn Howe. <laughs> Miriam Rose Harshberger. <laughs> Maya Nair Hartman. <laughs> Hafid Ali Hassan in absentia. Catherine Hatfield, summa cum laude. <laughs> Chloe Hiding. Dario Herrera. <laughs> Joshua Tamaz Seals Hewson. Piper Kelly Higgins. Owen Lee Highland. Brianna Christy Josephine Hill. Olivia Joy Hindi. Noah Olivier Savage. Patrick Richard Hodgson. Catherine Bosch Holbrook. 
Nicholas Roberts Hollen. Samuel Christopher Holmes. Rachel Dekira Horowitz. Hugo Kingston Hua. Joseph Hua Fan. Hui Jin Huang. Maya Iwamoto Huffman. Elizabeth Lee Hughes. Nicholas Era Iskandarian. Noah Jacobson on the balcony. Richard Michael Jacobson in absentia. Liza Jennifer Barry Jacoby. Nigel Maxwell Jaffe. <laughs> Amelia Alice Michelle Margaret Elizabeth Arnold Jamins. <laughs> Maya Catherine Jasinska in absentia. Eric Hamilton Johnson. <laughs> William Lewis Palmer Johnson. Devon Anthony Jones. <laughs> Sophia Elena Jones. Alexander Varn Charles Joshua. Daniel Gannon Kesmerick. Anna Jiahui Gonkugan. Madeline Robin Albert Kaplan in absentia. Michaela Kappas. Nicholas Stilnianos Karamanis. Jackson Henry Karofsky. Jake Austin Kastenhuber in absentia. Fiona Whitelaw Keller in absentia. Jomo Kenyatta. Georgia Austin Keo in absentia. Samia Rahman Khan. Serena Kanal. Wyatt Anders Kazrashahi. Brendan Michael Kiernan. Carolyn Kim. Jihoon Kim, summa cum laude. Joanna Youngwon Kim. Minjoon Kim. Mara Catherine Kipnis. Aliyah Klein. Stephen Bradley Kletcher. Peter Finnerty Knowlton. Ruth Lillian Kramer. Rebecca Quo. Reed Katsuya Kurashiga, summa cum laude, on the balcony. Carson Ellis Kurtz. Lydia Diane Margaret Kurtz. Madison Rose Lacasse. Victoria Leno. Michelle Peace Popiro Lake. Amy Lamb. 
Y. Wilson Lamb. Paul White Lapey. Joseph Michael Chakravarthi Laraka. Asher Glasday, in absentia. Ruth Eloise Roberta Lawrence. Cosmo Lazzarino. Emily Liao. Paul Olivier Leclerc. Andrew June Lee. Annika Lee. Brennan W. Lee. Clara Lee on the balcony. Jennifer Robin Lee. Ji Hong Lee. Sonia Soman Lee, summa cum laude. Kofi Joseph Lee Berman on the balcony. Heidi Lucinda Leeds. Anna Catherine Leedy. Nadine Stratton Levy. Daniel David Levine. Melvin Lewis. Darren Tamshin Lee in absentia. Gavin Lee. Alan Lynn. Christopher Liu. Aiden Lloyd Tucker. Emily Catherine Locke. Emma Courtney London. Matthew Thomas Long. Georgia Suzuko Lord in absentia. James I. Lovett. Arrington Luck on the balcony. Crispin Wakaza. Andrew Benjamin Ma on the balcony. Nicole McWilliams. Robert Dunn Maymarone in absentia. Tafara Makaza in absentia. Aviva Simcha Lane Malin. Hamza Menkor. Edward Francis Manzella in absentia. Julie Marie Mariani. Emily Jessica Marquis, summa cum laude. Jaslyn Nicole Martel. Sherwood Martineau. Abigail Clark Matheny. Marcelo Antonio Mazariego. Georgia Lee McLean. Taylor McLennan. Ethan Thomas McCullough, in absentia. Thomas Austin McGee. Gavin James Wybrow McGuff, summa cum laude. Henry Ian McGrew, on the balcony. Margaret Rose Meehan. Jason Meinchies. 
Laura Lee Meinchies, summa cum laude. Catherine Melkonian. Carter Holman Melnick. Lauren Michelle Menavar. John Arell Menton. Samuel Abraham Merman. Joseph Paul Messer. Izaki Metropolis. Victoria Michalska on the balcony. Connor Patrick Middleton. Isaac Miharis. Clayton Moses Bisgard. Shan Moazehni. Edna Abdurrahman Muhammad. Gabriella Rose Kucha Montembo in absentia. Hannah Nicole Moore. Sophie Catherine Sidwell Moore. Hannah Morgan. Odysseus Morgan. Siobhan Magella Morrissey. Rachel Ann Morrow. Nathaniel Munson Paloma in absentia. Abigail Ray Murray Stark. Michael Sorelli Myers in absentia. Mukund Jeevan Nair. <laughs> Sophia Marina Nair. Nilay Milavini. Emily Jane Nooner. Maxine Aning Huay. Joshua Barton Noonan. Morgan Dorothy Noonan. Keegan George Norana. Allison Elizabeth Norris. Cole Morton O'Flaherty. Charlotte Oakley. Michaela Grace O'Connor in absentia. Max Thomas O'Dell. Vanessa Ian. Samuel Ojo. Shayi Ala O'Shea. Hal Olson. Virginia Elizabeth Antiveros. Nate Orlock. Kristen Ortega. Catherine Gray Mesa Osborne. Patrick Otley. Isabel Ann Harding Oweleen in absentia. Eric Chung Wen Pappas. Devin Parfait. Abraham Sungil Park. Christiana Park. Rebecca G. Wan Park on the balcony. Iris Park in, abs in absentia. Hemel Patel. Sanket 
Gopesh Patel. Cassidy Rose Powell. Alexandra Royal Kim Pear. David Stewart Piercy. Mitchell Robert Pelletier. Essence Kiara Perry. Anna Genevieve Peterson. Elijah James Petrick in absentia. Kiwi Pham. Julia Hung Tron Pham. Anna Maria Pico Ohms. Aspen Jill Pearson in absentia. Aaron Michael Pinto. Henry Russell Platt IV. Anjali Dugal Poe. Catherine Olivia Powell. Chilia Jean Soleil Powell. Quincy Reese Powers. Serena Shizu Prasad. Sonia Kumi Prasad. Grace Elise Pratt. Bryn Elizabeth Puppy in absentia. Philip Pyle. Victoria Azure Peicher. Nar Chin. Alice Chu. Vanessa May Quinlan. Ahad Qureshi. Erfa Qureshi. Theodore Maxwell Raider. Cohen Rahman. Vikram Ramaswamy. Nicholas Peter Ranieri in absentia. Bless Kaya Reese on the balcony. Carol Powell Regula. Moro Renteria in absentia. Cynthia Reyes. Carrie Ann Reynolds. Iman Rabi. Daniel David Riles. Savion Justin Rivers. Javier Rabello Castillo. Lilia Ray Rabinowitz. Faith Rodriguez. Amanda Noel Roth. Claire Bergrita Best Rogowski in absentia. Samuel Raymond Rohr. Maria Jose Ramon. Chelsea Taina Romulus. John Patrick Rooney. Derek Rosario. Isabel Rosenberg. Jacob Dresa Rosenberg on the balcony. Joseph Rossetti. Troy Edward Rothman Jr. in absentia. Andrew Joseph Royak. Roman David Ruiz. Sophia Alicia Ruiz. Aiden Pablo Ryan. 
Helene Kim Yu. Tim Saffold. Mahesh Saha. Victoria Page Saltz. Elizabeth Marie Sandoval Simon. Tula Waters Shapiro. Samuel Schraver. Andrew Jake Schreibstein. Nicholas J. Schrader on the balcony. Pritul Sen. Jonathan David Sirkew. Nicholas Cervetio. Saud Afzal Shafi on the balcony. David Maximovich Shakirov. Nicholas Thomas Shinovsky. Claire Shinyu Shao. William Thomas Shea. Sophia Arum Shin in absentia. Benjamin Evangelisto Siciliano. <laughs> Natalie Grace Silver. Sarah Elizabeth Skidmore. <laughs> Gavin Small. Kaylin Delena Smith. Alicia Gabrielle Smith Reyna. Mira Louise Snearson. William Cordez Snyder in absentia. Rosalind Sherez Sokol. AJ Solecki. Blaine Solomon. Julia Salloway, Marlon Stanfield Pasminio, Aaron Isaiah Stanton, Jonathan Richard Stacher in absentia, Tandy Efwa Steele, Julia Ann Stock, Mackenzie Stoker. Frank Albert Stola on the balcony. Kaylin Tyler Stoller in absentia. Hannah Catherine Stone. Olivia Joan Straw. Anna Strong Garcia. Ji Wan Sung in absentia. Kyle Sung. William Peniman Swindell. Carolyn Daniels Talley in absentia. Sean Tan. Emma Hart Tapscott. Chelsea Sa Sarah Taylor. Mark Julian Taylor in absentia. Benjamin Paul Telicki. Max Richard Theory. Nathan Hugh Timothy. Samuel Igovix Thorpe, summa cum laude. Garrett Tak Ern Liang, summa cum laude. Harrison Walcott Toll on the balcony. Lucas Edward Tolly. Eric Wynn Tran. Hannah Trudeau. 
Lauren Tsang. McGallan So. Topjor Tenzin Sultrim. Luis Umotessa Kayiranga. Luke Grayson Valade on the balcony. Joseph Martin Valencia in absentia. Ryan Valladares. Thomas James Van Bell. Azaria Elise Vargas. Ibolita Vesquez. Megan Alexandra Voss in absentia. Clarissa Cena Wallen. Angela Wang. Eric Wang. Benjamin Nicholas Ward. Patrick Michael Watson in absentia. Ryan Hughes Watson. Ben Weinstein. Isaac Noah Weissman. Elizabeth Grace Welch. Icho Wong. Trevor Robert Wertheimer. Jarrett William Wessner in absentia. Olivia Ray White. Lucia Costanza Wiggers. Lu Lucas Reese Wild in absentia. Isaac Jeffrey Wilkins. Nicole Jane Wilkinson. Riley Will. Tristan James Willa. Matthew David Williamson. Stephen Donald Willis. Brandon Linwood Wingfield. Isabel Claire Wood. Catherine Alice Wright. Cho Huan Wu in absentia. Nikki Chi Wu. Junza Cecilia Chef. Ashley Jua Sho. Ewen Chu. Van Ashley Yaw on the balcony. Grace Yang. Kevin Jang Yang, summa cum laude. Catherine Ye, summa cum laude. Mason Elizabeth Young. Magdalene York in absentia. Christina Kim Young. Ryan Newton Young. Annie Yu. Dalton Yu. Chen Yu Zhang. William H. Zhang. John Springs Zhou. Isabella Zorich in absentia. Peter Giles Duke, student musician. Gigi Gamez, student musician. 
William Avery Kingham, student musician. Michael Medvedev, class speaker. Irene Bruni Lowenson, summa cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa speaker. Philip Martin Nowinski, summa cum laude, valedictorian. Argenis Herrera Palino, class marshal. Charlotte Gail Jones, class marshal. Rachel Ann Newgard, class marshal. Last but not least, Shreyas Rajesh, class marshal. Members of the senior class, please stand for the conferring of the degree. By virtue of the authority invested in me by the Board of Trustees, I confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Arts entitled to all the rights, honors, and privileges appertaining thereto. Congratulations, class of 22. <laughs> remain standing. Let us remember to congratulate the seniors on the balcony. And while you're standing, there's not a single graduate who would be here today without the support and encouragement of many people. So as we celebrate you, let's also celebrate them and recognize all the parents and family members and loved ones and friends joining us today with a standing ovation. Thank you to you and to those from afar tuning in to cheer on our graduates. And while the students are still standing, let's give them one more round of applause. Thank you, you may now be seated. I now call on Kate Ramsdell, who's the president of the Society of Alumni to welcome our new recipients of the degrees to the Society of Alumni. Hey, good morning, and congratulations. I'll add my congratulations to all of you who are here to support our graduates, but also to the class of 2022. You're amazing. So it may take a while for all of this to sink in, but by crossing the stage, or air high-fiving us from Stetson Balcony, you have joined over 31,000 fellow EFs as an alumnus. We live all over the world. We're ready to meet you, to support you, to be conduits to opportunity for all of you. And I'm just here to welcome you and say, please lean on us. The work of the Society of Alumni is to make good on the college's promise to be an inclusive community. We say that in the SOA, there's a place for every EF to be seen, to be heard, and to be supported. We are the oldest society of our kind, having celebrated our 200th birthday this year. And this is usually the part where my predecessors would say something pithy about a college over the hill that also celebrated a 200th birthday of its own kind this year. But now that Biddy has come over from the dark side, I can't say anything bad. <laughs> I hope that like so many of us who came before you, you've realized that while Williams is a place, most importantly, it's its people. 
From my home near Boston, when I drive into Williamstown, I come past five corners and over the hill. Just at the top of Route 7, I see Route 7's purple flanked vistas. This place is magical, I think, as I crest over. And then my memory releases a flood of sensory imagery. It's the first bite of a bagel supreme or a honey bun, the glint of the snow as I would trudge up Mission Hill to a work study job, and the soft dent that I bet is still there in every single step underfoot in Williams B. It took me a lot of time at Williams to reckon with my own privilege, and I recognized that it was a lot of my privilege that allowed me to love this place pretty unabashedly, both while I was here and then as an alumnus. And in fact, it took a lot of drives back into Williamstown to recognize what Toni Morrison calls rememory, the memories I forgot I had, the experiences that I forgot I knew. And though my memories were not shaped by the trauma that roots Morrison's words in her novel Beloved, they gradually informed, for me, a much deeper and clearer understanding of Williams. And while it's not always magical, I think it's a place worth coming back to. So connections to EFS for 25 years have kept me plugged in. And as an alum, you'll have access to all of us, whether through EFLINK and regional associations, a whole host of decades-long affinity networks. And you can volunteer. You can be a class agent. You can be a career mentor. You can be a class officer, and I just want to say thanks to those of you who have already said yes to doing that. And my best advice going forward is just to say yes to everything, anything that Williams asks of you, anything that anybody asks of you. Please get and stay involved. And whenever you see people in an airport or in an elevator or walking down the street wearing Williams gear, please just say hi. I will tell you that some of the best conversations I ever had started with, did you go to Williams too? A fellow alumna shared a reflection during the bicentennial that I've had a really hard time shaking from my memory. And actually, Father Boyle alluded to something very similar last night at baccalaureate. And I will promise you, I did not pull an all-nighter to write my speech. Um, Williams isn't a place that I went to. It's a place that I come from. In our homes, they help to make us who we are. And my hope that is for you, if Williams is not already a home, that it will become one. It will be a place to which you always want to come back. So congratulations and welcome to the Society of Alumni. Thank you, Kate. With these ceremonies now drawing to a close and in bidding you all farewell, I would just at, remind the audience to remain standing until after the academic procession has moved out of the area and ask the new graduates to keep the line moving until they've reached the Route 2 sidewalk. And now we're going to welcome Will, Gigi, and Peter back on stage to perform while we sing two verses of the mountains, after which the chaplain to the college will offer a benediction. Please remain standing. A little bit earlier, uh, Mr. Meacham said that his speech was the only thing standing between us and the rest of our lives, but clearly he'd forgotten about singing the mountains. So. Uh, Gigi and I will take the verses. Uh, you can find the words in your bulletin, and we'd love if everyone could sing along for the choruses.
the mountains, the mountains, we greet them with a song, whose echoes rebounding, their woodland heights above, shall mingle with their gold, that winds and fountains sing, till hill and valley, gaily, gaily On this day of graduation, class of 2022, you are taking with you the last memories of the way things used to be. Out the door with you goes a lot of what we remember about Williams, the things we used to do, the traditions that we used to pass on, like batons from one racer to another. But thank you for what you have left behind, a realization that change comes whether we like it or not. Class of 2022, you leave behind a realization that we can adapt. Class of 2022, you remind us of why we are here, a learning community of curiosity and exploration, of friendship, of problem discovery, and finding solutions together. As you go, you take the last of our collective memories of the pre-pandemic era, but do not be held in bondage by these memories. Go forth and live lives of passion and curiosity. Take care of each other, and when faced with a need for change, embrace adaptation. When faced with conflict over difference, embrace kindness and tenderness. Now, benedictions are usually a time where we ask God for a blessing, but you are the blessing. You have been a blessing to us, and now we send you into the world because the world needs you more than ever before. But before you go and change the world, please get some rest. So we practiced this yesterday. Let us go forth rejoicing in the power of our collective spirit and love. And the people said, Yay! <laughs> Sheriff Bowler, pray. Bring these ceremonies to a close. By the power vested upon me as sheriff in the county of Berkshire, the 233rd commencement of Williams College is hereby terminated. God save the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. <laughs>